Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. In the first story, we tell you about a funny situation the military got into on the Autobahn. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. You know the way? Yes, sir. I recently visited Germany with my parents and stayed with a family we know through the military. They're German, we're not. The main character is the husband, who I'll refer to as husband, of our German friend's daughter. He's in the Bundeswehr, but had this story from an exercise they'd been on. But first, some quick information that might be wrong because I'm not in the military. Each tank has a commander responsible for their tank, and the tanks are combined into groups of several that maneuver together under the command, a commander in one of the tanks. Usually, when you want to drive a tank on a paved road, you put pillows on the track so that you don't ruin the road. Meanwhile, when driving in the wintertime, every fourth track is switched with one with a big X on the bottom that digs into the ground slash ice and gives you some traction. So on to the story. They were on a winter exercise driving tanks, maneuvering around with these titans and doing military stuff. At one point, they needed to go from their position to a new one further away. They're moving, staying in formation, and looking for any enemy, something they haven't seen in quite a while. Finally, the commander figures out that he's leading a platoon of tanks the wrong way, and they need to get back quickly. The commander sees a long stretch, which is covered by forest to the left, and a reverse berm on the other side. He orders his platoon to do full speed along the berm. Husband suggests this might be the effing Autobahn because it seems a bit too perfect to find such a long stretch with this perfect hill to their right. Nah, F that suggestion. Full speed must have been what the commander was thinking because he was not phased. Well, turns out that was the effing Autobahn and they probably caused millions worth of damages by driving on it for at least a few hundred meters with their x tracks. And our second story. I'll see you in court. A few years back, I was moving into a new apartment with a coworker of mine. He was an okay roommate, good guy overall, just did some crappy things. Not the focus of the story, though. Anyway, so as we move in, they give us the inventory of the apartment so we can mark everything that's wrong with it. They tell us they just had the carpets replaced 18 days earlier and that the maintenance crew had also replaced the stove and bathtub. Yay for us, right? So we went through and started marking stuff. I'm a bit anal retentive about this stuff, so I marked every little mark, ding, scratch, etc. in the place. In this allegedly new grayish carpet, you know the type that'll quickly stain when the sun shines on it? There were three smallish stains on it, all off yellow, one in the living room, one in my room, and one in my roommate's room. We marked this down and made sure we were as specific as later. When we finished up, turned the inventory in, went over it with the leasing agent who signed that it was accurate, and we were good to go. I move in with my pup, and my roommate moves in with his cat. Fast forward 14 months. I'm moving out to move in with a couple of other friends, and we're getting ready to clean and whatnot, when who shows up but Karen, the leasing agent for the pre-inspection. I was at work at the time, but my girlfriend was there. Apparently, Karen walks in, down the hallway, says, oh yes, carpet, and then walks out. She'd been in the apartment less than a minute. Now, even though we were guys and not super clean freaks, we did maintain an overall clean environment, according to my girlfriend. So her saying that was weird. We figured we were okay. Yeah, stupid us. We moved out and go our separate ways. I get a bill in the mail three weeks after move out for $1,400 for carpet replacement and other random cleaning things. Now, some of those things were completely on me or my roommate because, one, My roommate got attacked right one night, about a week or two before we moved out, so he did no cleaning whatsoever. My girlfriend and I did our best, but we figured we'd get dinged a little. But not the full $500 deposit and then an extra $1,400. Holy crap. I sit down with the Karen and Karen's boss, Super B, and basically ask WTF. They brought up the three stains and said they were made either by my dog or roommate's cat. They also said the inventory on our first day that Karen signed was invalid because I was too thorough for it to be true. And the carpet was brand new. I basically said, that's bullcrap and I'm not paying it. So Super B sent it to collections. I fought it for a year with the collection agency and got nowhere. It took my credit score from around a 750 to a 650. Needless to say, I was exhausted from my high-stress job from fighting this 
and I was just ready to just pay it and be done until the best girlfriend in the world pointed out that I should just sue them. So I did. I sued the apartment complex for $7,500, the max I could sue in small claims without needing to get a lawyer involved. I couldn't afford one. I had the sheriff's department deliver the lawsuit paperwork to the apartment complex's parent company and had a court date set. I was scared crapless as I'd never done this kind of thing before. I prepped what little evidence I had and went to court. The Honorable Judge Awesome McAwesome Sauce was presiding that day, and when my case was called, I went up with my evidence, and the apartment complex was nowhere to be found. So Judge Awesome asked me why I was suing for such a large amount. I explained about the situation, showed that I had the inventory with their signature that clearly said both parties agree there were stains on the carpet prior to my move-in, and therefore I didn't think it was fair I had to pay for the carpet but I was willing to pay what I knew I owed if they would just remove my bill from collections. I also said I'd called in sick from the anxiety of dealing with this a few times over the last year, and I was currently missing work to be in court that day, and while I didn't expect to get $7,500, I wanted to get their attention and stick it to them because they can't just treat people like this. Judge Awesome listened and smiled and said something along the lines of, well, since they aren't here, I'll give you a summary judgment, which means you win. And not only do you not have to pay for the carpet, but you can have your full deposit back. I wanted to start dancing, but I'm in court and a terrible dancer, so I didn't. He gave me my full deposit back, plus the few days of work I missed, even though I said I got sick pay for it. All in all, it was about $1,500, and he ordered that they remove it from my credit and take it from collections. I called them up and told them that I'd sued them today and won. Super B said, oh well, we had a mix-up and our lawyers forgot to show up but would you still like to pay your bill? I laughed at her and said, F no, and hung up. They tried not to pay initially, so I sent them a letter with the judge's judgment and said I would put a lien on the company if they didn't pay up, so I got a check about a week later. Basically, take photos, get copies, and never just pay the bill if you don't actually owe it. It is worth fighting in court if it's truly not on you. And our last story. My grandmother destroyed our family's bully. Background. So this happened when I was younger, around 11 or 12, but I learned about all of it only a couple of months ago. My mom had just finished makeup school, yes, that's a thing, and opened a small home business in addition to her regular job. The business involved giving clients manicure, pedicure, waxing, and hairstyling. We lived in a small town, around 5,000 people. On to the story. It was like three months after my mom first opened her business. Business was going well, and she had pretty pleasant clients up until then. Anyways, this woman, let's call her CB, short for Crazy B, was someone my family knew for a long time. Not that they were particularly close with her, but they did know her husband. One day, she scheduled an appointment with my mom for her daughter, there was a party or something, who was my ex-classmate. So she came over, my mom did her nails and her hair, she was very satisfied with it. No complaints, just compliments. The procedure was around 300 shekels and CB paid. Fast forward to the next day, CB called my mom furious and demands she give her back her money since the hair and nails fell apart and ruined her daughter's evening. Which was a lie since there were a bunch of photos on Facebook for that event that showed CB's daughter with everything intact. My mom decided not to argue with her and just give her the money back. When she met up with CB to give her the money, CB went something like, I'm going to sue you for damage to my daughter's morale. You'll be paying me for a very long time. Money was tough back then, and my mom knew that hiring a lawyer wasn't a possibility, so she broke down. She went to cry to my grandma. Now, my grandma is known for being very hardcore. When my mom cried to my grandma, obviously my grandma was having none of it. She went like, no one dares to touch my offspring. I'll kill that bee, in Russian. Here comes the revenge. Before the actual revenge, my grandmother decided to do what any responsible adult would do. She yelled at CB, called her all the bad names in the dictionary, and demanded she return the money to my mom. CB, of course, refused. That's where crap went loose. First, she let everybody know what kind of person CB was. She was like, she cheated out a single mother with two kids out of money and caused her a lot of emotional distress. Since my grandmother had a high standing status in the community, Everybody sided with her and would give CB death stares when she passed by, going as far as to calling her a bee and stuff when she passed by. CB found out my grandmother is the one responsible for that and went to confront her. 
My grandma went like, give my daughter her money back, and she refused to pay up. CB sent her husband to talk to my grandma, but once again, my grandmother went like, give my daughter her money back. Her husband's kind of a chicken, so he quickly backed down. After ruining her status in the community and CB still refusing to pay up, my grandmother was very furious. She wanted to cause even more crap, and one day she found the perfect opportunity. She went to the local deli and saw CB working there, which was perfect. Now, even though my grandmother is hardcore, she knows how to suck up to people and sweet talk them, which is why she has a high standing status. After my grandma saw CB, she went straight to her boss. She came up with some stuff how CB has some skin disease and she's touching the food and she'll spread it to other people. I know it's BS, but still. And FYI, she didn't actually have skin disease. And that until CB was fired, she, along with other regular customers, would stop shopping there. CB was quickly fired after that. Next up, my grandma went to her regular spa where she knew a lot of people and saw CB working there, working as a receptionist. She went to her boss and complained how CB has skin disease and crap and demands she's fired. CB was fired. The same pattern continued on and on. First, it was a local clothing store, then it was a pet store, gas station, and another type of store. Her latest job is at the gallery. When she saw my grandma approaching the store, she ran to the door to open it to my grandma, almost bowing, and said as politely as she could, Welcome, Grandma. How are you doing today? Hey, guys. Thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.